Hey guys, this is Sarah's Night, and um, I know I don't do this kind of thing a lot. Well, actually, it's not even true that I don't do it a lot. This is the first time I believe I've ever done something like this. I know you don't, you probably don't hear of like update videos or anything except from, you know, much bigger time. Um, probably even professional LPers on YouTube or internet critics or something that maintain their own sites and all that and do this kind of thing for a living. But nevertheless, I thought I should let you know about kind of what's been going on with my channel lately for the few of you that are thankfully um, subscribers and fans. So, um, you might know that I was going through Resident Evil Mortal Knight just now. That's my current LP, and it was spontaneous, but I'm actually not able to finish it. You see, the game actually keeps crashing uh, at a certain point very, very shortly. Uh, that occurs very, very shortly after, after I last left off. I know we were towards the end of the game, but I didn't want to just leave it like that, you know. Just, you know, the five minutes of footage that I did, <laughs> that, that I did have, <laughs> and then... You know, the game crashed at that point, me just be like, oh, okay, well, I found out that there's actually not much else after this, so I'll just tell you what happens and call it an LP, no. Um, it turns out that, even though I'm really not able to continue right now, I looked it up, uh, trying to find solutions to this crash problem, and apparently it happens at this certain point in the game for a lot of players. And thankfully, uh, the creator of Mortal Knight, Res Evil Nemesis 30, was actually already in the process of working on a version 2.0 uh, which is or at least that's that's the version he calls it and it, and it should be the final version which he you know kind of says that uh, these kinds of specific problems with crashing are addressed and you know should work very well that you can at least play the game and not have nearly such a difficult time playing it as I did uh, especially with you know, rec recording and, and uploading it, I, I can't even begin to tell you how many ways that got messed up, which is why the quality is so poor. But, um, I, w I was a little heartbroken at first, thinking, uh, God, there's no way I'm going to be able to finish this now, because when I first saw, you know, as I was searching for a solution to this problem, and I, and I saw that, um, he was coming out with this final version, it was something he had announced, like on his official site, I believe, um, or at least it was his section of this uh, site, this um, this online site dedicated to video game mods, like the ones he, like the ones he made. And in his section for Mortal Knight, um, you know, the time he had made this first announcement about working on this version 2.0, it was actually it was actually from like 2016, last year, you know. So I thought, oh crap, he had just abandoned that because I, I couldn't find, I, it obviously hadn't been completed yet, I couldn't find anything where it was where it was available for download already. But then I happened to uh, find another uh, search result which uh, led me to his Facebook page and Red Sea One Nemesis 30 there actually made like a post yesterday from this, from the time I'm making this video, like November 15th. 2017 uh, saying okay guys look I know I announced this last year but I promise you I am working on it and it should address you know such and such problems and this really should be uh, the, by far the best gaming experience you get out of any of the previous versions uh, that have come out on Mortal Knight you know it was just kind of trial and error with him you know he's come out with several versions that you know correct a few more bugs than the last you know, as as he as he himself and the and the players who are Resident Evil fans, and of course, you know, definitely want to play his game, his interpretation of um, Evan's backstory and all. They they find those bugs too and report them to him. So he says this will be the final version, and it should definitely at least be playable. And uh, I think he's also playing on tinkering with the difficulty, which he admits, you know, I know there were some sections of the game that just were really way too hard, just unfair to the player. So even for those, you know, Resident Evil veterans that wanted a challenge, I mean, I'm pretty sure you're going to want me to uh, kind of ease up on these, you know, ease up on the difficulty of these parts too. So um, I don't know when it will be. Exactly, but I'm just assured that he is working. He is working on it. He hasn't abandoned the project. So in due time, at some point, he will come out with version 2.0. I will definitely download it. Uh, probably even keep it, you know, for for future playthroughs. Just, you know, for the heck of it. But definitely to, um, I'll probably just start the LP totally over. 
on on this game uh, go through from start to finish and it will be and it will be a clean recording this time all the way through so I'm looking forward to that but again I, I can't finish it right now on the version 1.8 that I have which is the latest one it just I haven't found a solution to this to this problem where it just crashes not not um, with even the general uh, computer specs that I have you know that I've ascribed to uh, to you know my search for a solution so but it, it will be done eventually and I, I look forward to really just kind of doing the whole thing from beginning to end again whenever it, whenever version 2.0 does come out so I just want you to know that I won't be able to uh, finish it uh, right now it's it's going to have to the LP is gonna have to just kind of be declared a loss for now but um, at the same time of course there's always uh, there's future LPs that I still have in the back of my mind to do, uh, especially the the um, hard uh, the hard difficulty mod of Final Fantasy VII that Lantis found for me a few years ago. I know that was one of the first things I intended to do um, when I when I first became an LP, -er, and I just I, I haven't gotten to it. Just it's one of those things that seems so mentally daunting a task, and I know it really shouldn't be. But of course, with my com with my computer as old as it is now, and with its weird random problems, I expect that it's just not going to work well anyway right now. So it's on, but it is on the back burner. It's it's on the to do list, um, and hopefully in a year or so. That that was my main point. I think I wanted to address in this update video. Um, all the all the re all the all the other Resident Evil games, um, not the numerical ones. I've I've been through all them so far, but like the spinoffs, like Outbreak One and Two, um, Operation Raccoon City, and so forth, and Final Fan this uh, hard this hard mod of Final Fantasy Seven. Uh, hopefully, I mean, in another year or two, I will I will be able to get to them easily with a brand new computer. It's like a, a this is kind of tied into my major life decision of moving to the Niagara Falls, uh, Toronto area of Canada. I actually do have uh, two friends around that area from online, and I even met one of them in person when I went to visit Canada a few weeks ago to kind of look for specific places where I might want to live. And, you know, I'm still stuck in the immigration process right now, but it is something I fully intend to follow through with. And of course, since I'll be living on my own again, and I mean, I know I do already have like my own money, and I'm I'm working and I'm working for myself right now, and not having to have like my mother take care of me financially. It's just you know, being a guy, I just don't want to live with <laughs> I don't want to live with family all my life, you know. I mean, I've had my taste of freedom before for several years after graduating college, and you know, just uh, being able to be in my own house again once I once I moved to Ontario. Um, the, the name of the Canadian province where Niagara Falls in Toronto is located, uh, you know, that means, you know, new, ha new, new home, uh, especially just living on my own, and I'll, I fully intend to just have a new computer built from scratch, uh, customized with, with all the best parts, you know, processing, um, processing RAM, uh, especially video and sound card, all that good stuff. And it should enable me to, especially being uh, brand new and all, without just the little problems catching up over the years to you, uh, I should I should be able to do all those LPs that I constantly kept on the back burner all this time for years without any problems. It'll definitely be easier to even have just had the mentality to start to start on them and everything. But uh, so I mean, I just wanted you to know that those those things are still in mind, and also. Um, in the in the future, another another major point I wanted to address is in in the future. Just I mean, maybe years off, but eventually I've been tinkering with the idea over the last few years since even becoming an LP -er on YouTube and kind of and at that time this was uh, late 2012 when I first started LPing and that was at the end of a major um, change in my life, kind of a uh, just a major life event. And I'm not talking about the same way like making a major decision like moving to Canada all on my own. And so and so far away from family, um, but you know it was a, it was a difficult time of uh, kind of a weird, uh, very little known um, case of depression and obsessive compulsive disorder, and of course with that anxiety naturally the symptoms of that, 
that I suffered through and I became a better person at the end of it as nightmarish as that year was. Uh, it lasted for most of 2012 and right at the tail end of that when I started recovering and kind of finding answers to life's many questions for myself. Uh, you know, Lantis, I guess he just kind of came in at a right time and really encouraged me to kind of get back on my feet and do things that, you know, as, especially as a gamer, would make me happy. So, yeah, a little side story to how I even, you know, how and when I even got led to LPing. But ever since the start of that time, really, I was tinkering with um, ideas of doing... Um, like reviews and critiques of of past movies and video games from my childhood that I either you know really loved or really hated uh, kind of just basically like uh, what the you know so many famous internet critics like the cinema snob or nostalgia critic or angry joe do and you know I'm not trying to be like them because I definitely would not have uh, the time or the patience to probably like put the same amount of pizzazz and like uh, <laughs> and like actual like r try to write you know stories into all those little reviews and stuff that's happening that's like happened to me in real life as the reviewer but just you know little videos where I just basically go through a game or movie and hopefully give funny you know critiques of them so uh, I even I mean at that time I even started like writing scripts for a few for a few of them like the kind of things I wanted to say and that's definitely still in the back of my mind too um, childhood movies especially like uh, this one Disney Channel original from that from the late 80s called Mr. Boogity which I which I loved as a kid but I actually just now noticed they had a sequel a few years ago like in 2011 and I I looked it up on I happened to I had just happened to find it up on YouTube when I was trying to find the original Mr. Boogity <laughs> movie, which is like a 40-minute, uh, like kind of family-oriented, ori uh, funny, you know, in terms of like how children might perceive it to be funny, kind of film. And I was just like, you know, I want to see that movie again after so many years. And I just tried looking it up on YouTube, and it was right there. It was actually fully available uh, in, in VHS quality, but nevertheless, it was a fully watchable movie. And in the suggestions, I found Mr. Boogity 2, uh, The Bride of Boogity, I believe, was what its official title was. That was actually made just a few years later in, like, 89 or 1990. And I was like, oh, great, wow, there was a sequel to this. I never knew it. I, you know, all this time, 20 years later, I'm in my, you know, I'm in my late 20s, and... <laughs> And I, I, you know, I sat down to watch both movies back to back. But when I got to uh, the sequel to Mr. Boogity, oh my gosh, it sucked so bad. And I started thinking immediately of like doing a review of that, of how much I hated this movie. And there were also there were also other things like uh, Final Fantasy IX, which is one of my most beloved video games of all time, easily. But I'd be probably even uh, I think it's been kind of unofficially number one on my top. You know my top list of uh, best video games of all time that I've ever played. It's it's been in my number one spot for years. Uh, but of course, I can find ways to poke fun at it and everything. And I was thinking of doing a review on that, and just a few other things. And I keep sometimes even as I drift off to sleep over the last few years, as I would drift off to sleep some nights, I would I would actually get the script in my head about what to say, and it actually came out pretty well. But of course, you know, putting it on paper and then committing it to to a camera and, and you know showing video footage of what it is I'm talking about and all that uh, that's another story but I am still thinking of of doing that so you might you might see that uh, a few years off but you might see that in the future and but back to back to let's playing uh, in terms of what I intend to do immediately pretty much right after I upload this video is starting on um, a recent survival horror game called the evil within which, to my understanding, the basic story on that is that uh, the guy who directed it, I think his name was um, Shinji Mikami. Is that the right guy? I might have him confused with somebody else. I can't remember what the recently deceased uh, president of Nintendo was. <laughs> I, I, I actually getting these names confused in my head, but it was it was the same guy who directed um, the classic Resident or most of the classic Resident Evil games, and he had I, th I think he had actually walked away from. Uh, all things Resident Evil once, you know, kind of around the time maybe like 5 came out or maybe it was 4 when they started becoming action more action-oriented and just downright silly and convoluted in their plots. Um, you know, because he, he, you know, he was is more about classic survival horror and he decided to give it another go with a completely different uh, game called The Evil Within that a lot of people, that it, ha it seemed to have a lot of hype before it came out. 
And even though it's really not the best game ever, I can find a lot of flaws in it, and the story could get confusing and sometimes, overall, I really did like the story, and as a, just the experience with horror itself, I really liked it. Um, I, I think I got it, like, at the beginning of 2015, uh, just a few months after it first came out, and I actually played it through several times, and at that time, they were all within a few months of each other, because ultimately I was just wanting to get to uh, Nightmare Mode and, like, kind of record the hardest difficulty playthrough of that game and just store it away in my computer for just if I ever wanted to go back and just watch it when I'm like an old man and my wife has passed away or something, uh, whoever my future wife will be, uh, the unlucky woman. Um, you know, if there ever came a time when I, I record a lot of uh, playthroughs of, of games, uh, pretty much every game that I own or intend to get through, tend to make a recorded playthrough of them eventually. Just for, you know, if there's ever a day in the future when I'm an old man, I'm incapable, I got like too much arthritis in my hands or something playing video games myself anymore. But hey, if I still got a computer or or a, a VCR or DVD player, I can still go back and watch these games, you know, the, the things I used to play just to kind of me down memory lane. That's, you know, if my wife isn't around anymore to scold me for still being <laughs> into video games at that age. But anyway, I'm sorry, I'm getting off track. Um, so the story is, I thought I hung my gloves up on that for good because I've been through this game in the in the course of the first few months that I owned it, uh, or, or the first year or so. I've been through that game like four or five times, you know, so I thought I need to hang my gloves up on this for a very, very long while. I mean, if I ever play it again in the future, like maybe two or three times total. Because even for a survival horror game, even though they tend to be shorter than RPGs, which, you know, survival horror and RPGs are kind of my forte when it comes to video games. Um, it's just that that was way too many times. But uh, then I thought back to doing an LP of this, uh, mostly for you guys, and to kind of re-familiarize re myself with the story so that I can actually have a, kind of a good lead into doing a blind LP of The Evil Within 2. So I mean, I'll kind of, I'll kind of what's going on because, far as to my understanding, even though I bought this game spontaneously and only kind of um, read just a, the summary on Steam, you know, when I was when I was buying it off the Steam website, um, to my understanding, it's basically a continuation. It's not like an entirely different story. It's a continuation of the first Evil Within, and might maybe even with the same characters, uh, especially the protagonist detective Sebastian Castellanos from the first game which I actually really liked him as a protagonist. Um, so I thought, you know, I should, if I'm going to do a blind LP of that, because I just happened to discover this game on Steam, I had no idea um, Capcom had decided to make a sequel to the, to the Evil Within. I had no idea until I just happened to see it on Steam a few days ago, and I just, a spontaneous buy, and, I, and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to regret it overall. Uh, I, ha I don't know anything of the game. I haven't like read people's reviews of it or seen uh, videos of gameplay on YouTube or anything, even though I, I think it has been out uh, at least a couple of months. It's not terribly new, but I wanted to make this a blind LP experience, and of course that means I really should go through the first one uh, for you guys' benefit if you intend to watch my LP of The Evil Within 2, and also to, again, re-familiarize re myself with the story of The Evil Within 1 so I can make connections to whatever happens in, in the sequel and not get, you know, confused in the middle of my LP, you know. So, um, those two games are definitely next, and I, I hope you'll enjoy uh, going through rediscovering uh, The Evil Within 1 with me and kind of a whole new adventure with the sequel. So, uh, in terms of uh, Let's Playing, I think I've, I've got all news on that out of the way, but uh, one last thing I wanted to talk about was, aside from uh, starting to do other projects on my YouTube channel, which I know I've been just about Let's Plays right now, with, with very few exceptions, um, but aside from other projects like uh, possibly doing um, like uh, humorous reviews of uh, games and movies is uh, this is entirely different this has nothing to do with gaming to be honest but for uh, I'm, I'm doing I'm the, the thing I'm about to talk about it's really for two reasons um, one to kind of rediscover my childhood and also even bigger reason is for the 
hopefully the entertainment of whatever younger audience I might have to my channel. Um, some of my subscribers um, hopefully might be, uh, you know, kind of like uh, children or or people in their teens, just uh, basically still in that for in their formative years. And if there are any of you out there, I would like to do this for you also to hopefully get you into reading if you aren't already. Um, see, what I was thinking of doing was actually um, reading aloud on on video and kind of with illustrations from the book to kind of just, you know, keep you something to look at while you listen to my voice. Um, this is basically like me doing story time. Uh, Sarah's Night doing story time to kids, I guess. Um... But there's a particular series of books from my childhood that I still read at least once every couple of years. I still read through all of them again to this day called Benicula. Um, some of you who are around my age uh, in your late 20s and 30s might actually know of this as well. And hopefully, you know, that just uh, kind of rang a, a pleasant uh, sentimental bell within you <laughs> as well. But um, it's, it's a series of books by um, one of the probably my most favorite author ever even to this day James Howe it's just he has such a spectacular way of writing that just draws me in it's so entertaining and clever and witty especially the dialogue between the two main characters in the Benicula books it's um the books are about a uh, rabbit just a seemingly ordinary black and white rabbit that is found um abandoned in a movie theater by this American family called the Monroes. Uh, they're, you know, they're pretty much the, just your typical middle-class uh, white American family. Um, you know, m mother, father, and two sons in the, in their t in their preteen and teenage years. And just while they went out to see, like, you know, this movie Dracula one night, one night in the theater right there in the dark on one of the seats, they find a rabbit in a cage named Benicula. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> they name him Benicula later. Of course, they, they don't have a name for him then, but they decided to adopt him. And just when they, br when they brought him home and presented him to the other animals in the house that they already have as pets, uh, the two main protagonists, um, Chester, uh, Chester the Cat and Harold the Dog, when they present, uh, you know, when they come home and present the, the rabbit to them, you know, they're deciding on a name, and because they found him at a Dracula movie, they decide on Benicula just to be, you know, I guess you could say stupidly clever, or just plain stupid, I don't know. You know, Bunny, Dracula, so put the two together. But anyway, I mean, I know it must sound so dumb to any adults listening to me right now, but it is, it is, it is to, to this day, like, some of the most, my most treasured memories when it comes to reading in my childhood years, and I still find the writing to just be so, I, 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 all I can say is that I just really love this guy's way of writing. It just it, it makes me not want to stop. And there's nothing there's nothing I can say. There's there's honestly nothing I can think of right now trying to uh, trying to think of all the lines of dialogue, everything that happens in the books that I honestly think is stupid or boring. I really have almost nothing negative to say unless I was really trying to nitpick. And the fact is uh, since these books are so precious to me, I thought um, in hopes of getting a potential younger audience I have, uh, the subscribers to my channel who are still in their formative years, you know, uh, elementary, middle, high school, that this will get them into reading. Just, I mean, just hearing my voice, you know, reading through these books aloud. And because to me, uh, I mean, despite, despite the technical log logical age in our society, you know, cell phones, internet, instant messaging, uh, online gaming, all that, there's still ultimately no replacing books as a source of knowledge, in my opinion. And uh, even more so, um, a fantasy world you can escape to that really develops your imagination, your ability to, to write and, and think, you know, in, in your later years. It just... I, re I really don't know what I can say about uh, physical books that probably no avid book reader like myself hasn't, you know hasn't said before so I mean you kind of hopefully you get enough of an idea of how passionate I, I still am as a reader even in even in this day and age uh, when there's so much gaming to do you know and of course you know the normal adult things of life uh, you know work and have maybe one day in the future uh, God help us all maintaining you know maintaining a, a home life with with a family of my own 
I mean, I know you can imagine, you know, whoever whoever the woman is who's going to <laughs> consent to marry Sarah's knight one day. She's um, she must be a glutton for punishment. She must also be an angel of mercy. But uh, to actually think of of bearing children with her, you know, little Sarah's knights running about this planet, son or daughter, I, I can't imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine that the world is ready for anything like that, but... So, I mean, the point is, um, this is something... Uh, this is something relatively simple to do on top of that, so I, it's something I'm definitely going to get onto soon. And I'm hoping that, uh, no matter what age you are, but uh, this is especially aimed towards the younger audience, um, of subscribers to my channel, um, no matter what age you are, I, I invite you to watch these videos when they come out. I intend to just basically read through all of the uh, Benicula books, um, first one to last. And, uh, you know, I can I can probably use... Uh, I, I really haven't looked up the specific part about, you know, like, uh, you know, intellectual property management and everything. Hopefully it won't be an issue uh, just kind of using, like, illustrations for the book because I really like the way that uh, James Howe's uh, illustrator, whoever that was, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember his or her name, um... I really liked their art style for these books as well, so hopefully that'll kind of give you something to focus on while listening to me read aloud. And it would be enough to draw you in and stay on through all these videos and hopefully become as um, fond of the characters in this in this world of Benicula and, and, the, and, the, and the adventures they go through. Um, it would get you as attached to them as I already have been ever since I was seven, seven or eight years old. Uh, when my grandmother bought the uh, first Benicula book, she just happened to find it, you know, in a, I guess in a library, a bookstore somewhere, and just like it just happened to think, hey, maybe that's something uh, my grandson Will would would like to read. So she, um, next time she visited me, she she brought that book with her. She she had bought it for me just on a whim. She had no idea. I I never heard of this these books before, and I immediately fell in love with them just upon reading the first one it, it's also fond memories for me uh, my grandmother who's been deceased for about 10 years she actually uh she actually uh, wanted me to read the book aloud to her just kind of like our own quality time together i'm like seven eight years old and i'm i'm like sitting next to her you know on a couch in the living room just kind of like snuggled up to her and just reading this aloud and she seemed to really like these books along with me every time Every time she found another one belonging to the Benicula series, she would, she would bring it to me whenever she came to visit me from out of town. So, but it's not just the—it's honestly not just the nostalgic factor to how I came to be a fan of these books. They really are to this day. They're they're some of my favorite books ever. The writing is just spectacular, and I can't even really begin to tell you how, other than in a really vague, uh, a vague way of describing it as just clever. <laughs> So that's definitely something um, I will be getting onto soon as well, and I hope you all will be uh, wanting to participate in that. I also, you know, kind of briefly researched it and asked. Uh, I know th I know there are other people that do videos like this where they're just uh, reading aloud from books and uploading them to YouTube. It's it's just you listen to their voice reading through the book, and you know, I've asked a couple of other people who have videos like this. I was like, did you run into any you know problems, like? Um, you know, intellectual property rights, a publishing company who, uh, you know, respond, you know, uh, who these books belong to, whatever the right, the author himself, uh, like a lot threatening of lawsuits or anything like that. And they were like, you know, no, it's, it's, it's pretty simple stuff. So hopefully this will not be a problem and these videos will come through on my channel. And, um, I guess that's, that's just about it. Um, yeah, kind of briefly before I before I stop for the evening, um, I did want you all to know that the major life decision of moving to Canada was not an easy one. As much as excited as I may have sounded about it, the the few times I might have mentioned it in in LPs and everything, just as an aside to what's going on in my life, it's it's something I am eager to embrace while kind of terrified of it at the same time. But I believe honestly believe that that's where the Lord Jesus has called me to in my in my life and I'm kind of eager and a little bit apprehensive about heeding that call it's going to be a major life change I'm trying my best not to bank on the fact <laughs> think that oh that means God has you know the most wonderful woman in the world uh, awaiting me there and I'll, I'll meet and fall in love with her and this will you know this will be my future wife this is where I'll meet her uh, I'm trying not to get too excited thinking that that's the reason he's called me I mean I've kind of 
I mean, honestly, I've, I've kind of been content to just be single all my life and just have a lot of uh, beautiful female friends who I'm very fond of. I mean, in fact, uh, one of them I, I met in person. Finally, I've, I've become a lot less shy about this kind of thing over the, over the last few years since I went through my sickness that I earlier described back in 2012. I've become a lot more... I guess courageous, but not in a bad way. I really don't know how to say it with uh, getting along with uh, with uh, all the women in my life. I mean, I've I've had plenty of female friends before, but it's like I'm kind of interacting them, with them on a more on a bolder and more personal level now. Uh, so I actually I actually met one of uh, one of my online friends, uh, a beautiful girl named Joanna, um, who actually lives in the Niagara Falls area and I met her in person when I went to visit Canada finally for myself a few weeks ago to to kind of uh, check the place out in detail again trying to see a specific place where I want to live just go touring and everything and I already already came to feel at home a lot of the time while I was there for that one week in that country it's it's a lot like America but of course there are times of apprehension where I suddenly look around and notice that I'm in a whole different country and I suddenly feel alone but Overall, it was people like Joanna, especially meeting her in person, and um, and getting along so well with her that made me feel like yes, I can, I can find a new home here. And I'll just go ahead and be honest, I, <laughs> uh, Joanna, I hope I hope you're not listening to this to take offense, you know, inadvertently. But it, yeah, I do, I'm pretty sure if if God does have my future wife awaiting me there, I'm kind of fairly certain it's not Joanna as as great a as great a lady as she seems to be. Uh, I mean, she's she's definitely a sports, uh, she's definitely a sporty, sportier kind of girl, more classy, and I'm just a gaming nerd, you know. I don't, I don't see us being able to really, <laughs> to really get along together as husband and wife. But yeah, I'm just kind of rambling on there. But uh, to conclude, I just wanted to let y'all know uh, what's going on in general with with my life especially with uh what little work i do on youtube and for the few subscribers that i do have i honestly i should take the time to get to know most of y'all by name because there's only like a hundred of you and as much and i don't mean to uh, belittle that or make it sound like it's not i don't mean to make it sound like it's not worth my while to to do what i do on youtube because i am thankful for the few that for a few of you that there are. I mean, I know there's plenty of people who don't have even near that many fans. And I know some of you especially follow faithfully and always be willing to give your input. And I, and I definitely appreciate that. And honestly, I do need to go through my through list of subscribers that I have since, you know, in comparison to a lot of people, it's, it's not that long. Like I said, there only seems to be around 100, 110 of you right now and get to know you better by name. But if I may uh, give a shout out for those in particular who I do remember, um, Blind Man and Pineapple Skewer. And uh, I'm sorry, I, I can think of like what your avatar looks like on YouTube, but I'm not sure. I know your username starts with an M, but you've definitely put in a lot of input lately. Uh, I, I, I'm guessing you're also a fellow Resident Evil fan since it's been mostly on those videos. Uh, Monos, maybe? Uh, but hopefully you know... If you're listening, you know who it is. You know that I'm speaking of you. And you'll take it to heart. But I do appreciate all of you. And again, I hope you'll continue just to uh, just go with me through my gaming life um, on YouTube in the future. And whatever whatever other projects I decide to do with my channel. Uh, especially especially the um, kind of the read aloud projects that, I'm, that I intend to do very, very soon. So again, have a good evening, guys. And I'll... I'll see you very, very soon with The Evil Within 1. Good night.